Hello everybody, welcome back, and I am the Chornica. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna talk about the new series episode 2 real fast. I don't really have too much time this week since I'm really, really busy with work and everything, so this is going to be a pretty quick review, just kind of glancing at the big, huge takeaways from this. Since I don't have too much time, this is going to be kind of a quick, quick kind of analysis of the second episode. But right off the bat, guys, I have to say that this episode, I'm very happy with it. Honestly, this is giving me a lot of hope. I am a huge fan in regards to wholesomeness and pureness, and right off the bat, this episode really made me like Go. Like, it really made me like Go, and I really like Ash and Go's relationship. They're like brothers in this episode already. Like, their, their interactions with each other, the, like, the fact that they bicker at each other, but they also praise each other at the same time. And the way they met was one of the best way, best, best encounters ever in this entire Pokemon series in the past 20 years. So, like, the best, if not one of the best encounters, and Go could very potentially be Ash's greatest, like, partner, I guess, like, you know, like, companion or friend that Ash has ever had. I mean, Brock is, like the mountain that this 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 relationship will have to beat but very potentially with what we've seen from go and ash's relationship i could honestly if, if it keeps going this route being extremely strong and you know is this good because it started off pretty freaking awesome in my opinion in regards to like their their relationship to each other but if it if it, if it goes throughout this entire series as strong as it is it began in this episode ladies and gentlemen well i could honestly see it hurting a whole hell of a lot if go ever ends up leaving the series right because at the end of you know pokemon 2019 pokemon 2020 etc whatever uh you know this series is just called pokemon the series right but technically we kind of refer to it as pokemon sword and shield but if Go ends up leaving, I could I could see it hurting a whole hell of a lot and Ash and Go really having like kind of an emotional goodbye. I could already see that and it's gonna hurt and I could feel that. And in this episode, it made me really feel like they were like already best friends. Like it, it was just done so well and Go when he first met Ash in the Lugia, he, he already liked Ash. He already liked his personality and he was like, you know what, I want you to be my friend. I'm gonna see you as my friend because like you're cool you're funny and then later on i just the fact what was actually funny like sun and moon was just kind of like slapstick trying to be trying to be funny in my opinion but so far like the thing the funniest thing that's happened in a while in pokemon was freaking uh <laughs> when when ash ash and go were like arguing about who's more interesting like i'm sorry like that was honestly extremely funny, because Go referred to Ash as a pretty interesting guy when, when they first met, and how he wanted to be his friend because he thinks Ash has a really interesting character. So, he wants to be his friend, but later on in the episode, near the end, where, you know, Go has this passion, this, this desire to get Mew and whatnot, um, and completely just, like, skips out on capturing, or starting, you know, having a Pokemon of his own, either Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle, he completely just, like, just like, no, I want Mew, and, and then he gets all excited talking about Mew, and then Ash is like, dang, you're a pretty interesting guy, Go, and then Go is like, yeah, I'm pretty interesting, but not as interesting as you, and Ash is just like, oh, that's true, I guess I win then, and then Go is like, it's like, wait, wait, what? No, I'm, in that case, I win, no, I'm more interesting, and then they start, like, bickering about who's more interesting, and I'm sorry, I don't know why I laughed at that part, but this is, that is the reason why I'm, I'm loving this already, it's just like, I can see, like, this friendship, this rivalry, as well as the brotherly love in this already, and I, I love it. I love that, and I, I, I could honestly, I'm honestly just excited for the series because of the relationship and how it evolves. Um, we don't know yet if it's gonna, you know, if Ash is ever gonna catch some Pokemon, what his goals are exactly. We know Go wants to capture Mew, and obviously Ash and Go are now both staying at this laboratory to be these lab assistants for Koharu's dad, right, the professor, and so he, because they, you know, jumped on Lugia and were, you know, analyzing its skin and its fins and whatnot, uh, the professor, and even Ash himself, surprisingly, could, I guess, now talk to Pokemon, because Lugia either spoke to him telepathically or actually spoke to him, 
Um, or maybe Ash actually can understand Lugia's cries now. Maybe, maybe that's actually going on. So we, you know, there has been a movie before where he has like this aura around him and he could understand so certain Pokemon and whatnot. So maybe Ash is actually going to go down the route of actually understanding Pokemon. Maybe actually being able to hear them, you know, like and actually understanding like directly uh, what <laughs> what they're saying. But uh, we'll have to wait for that. I think it's just because, you know, Lugia is a mythical Pokemon and that he's a legendary and that he spoke telepathically before in the previous movies. Like, I think it's just, I think it's just that again. But we could be wrong. Maybe Ash is legitly, like, starting to understand Pokemon like N does, you know, in black and white. So that's going to be really, really interesting takeaway from this. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how to feel about Koharu yet. Uh, she seemed really upset about Go in regards to the fact that he's kind of doing what he wants and she's just upset that he's not, she, I guess she just doesn't like the path that he's taking, uh, per se, and she's worried about him greatly and believes that she, he's never going to get a friend. Well, obviously, now he has a new friend in Ash, Ash likes him, even though, you know, he has somewhat of an ego. Ash doesn't care, he, he finds him pretty interesting, he likes his passion, his energy, so they became pretty fast friends, pretty much brothers at this point, so I don't think Goharo needs to worry about that anymore, but I think she might form some sort of maybe jealousy towards uh, Ash, perhaps? The fact that, you know, Ash and Go are going to start hanging out, and that Go is going to care more about Ash than her. And I could see maybe some rivalry in regards to friendship happen. That would be a really interesting concept for Pokemon and their writers to delve into. Uh, maybe there would be some sort of rivalry between Koharu and Ash in regards to their friendship with Go. And maybe Koharu will have to go through some some crazy episodes and, and development in regards to maybe just allowing Go to be himself instead of trying to criticize him over the path that he's taking, I guess. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, how do you guys think about Kuharo? I don't know what to say much yet. We haven't seen much of her character, but she's she's mainly there as being someone that's upset about Go in the way he is. But one of those big things about the way he is is that she believed that no one would ever be friends with him besides herself because of his ego of being a know-it-all. Well, he already has now a friend in Ash, so if that's out of the question, okay, now he has someone else that's not Koharu, why is Koharu still worried? I feel like that's going to be something interesting that we're going to see into the future. But finally, ladies and gentlemen, before I end the video off, we also had Mr. Mime staying along with Ash this time. So, Ash's mom goes away, goes back to Pallet Town. Ash and Go are here right in in this laboratory where their goal basically this series is to study pokemon analyze them probably find all sorts of different mythical pokemon and 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 i guess observe them uh this is kind of one of the things that go really wants to do i mean he loves observing pokemon and he wants the most rarest pokemon that being Mew, uh as his own pokemon we later learn that he eventually gets a score bunny though but he originally denied these three starter Pokemon in Kanto because he just wanted Go and he has like that ego of just wanting to have the most rarest Pokemon ever. But back to Mime though, Mr. Mime is staying along. Like, is Mr. Mime gonna be here in this entire series the whole time? Like, why is Mime staying back? Like, why is he staying with Ash? What importance is Mime going to have? How long is Mime gonna stay? It is maybe Mr. Mime staying just because, you know, there's like that new Gal Galar form, Mr. Mime. Maybe they're going to have some sort of reference between th those two mimes at some point. That, that will definitely happen. I can see that happening. But after that point, will Mime leave or is he staying for a more significant purpose? Very, very interesting. After all, it was Mr. Mime that won that lottery. Uh, Mr. Mime won that lottery that allowed Ash to go to Alola. So, maybe Mr. Mime will have some good luck and allow Ash to go to different regions or something, somehow. Uh, maybe Mr. Mime has some, some big significance because he's staying along. That's why, that's why so many people are just kind of like, wait, why, why is he staying back? Because that's so weird and so out of ordinary, I guess you could say. Like, 
Mr. Mime sticking with Ash? Okay. That's different, right? So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's all the big takeaways from this episode. We could definitely go more in depth with it later. Maybe more give some more predictions and discussions and theories, but I love your faces. Can't wait to see you guys the next one. If you guys you know, love Pokemon Sword and Shield, the games. If you guys like watching, you know, Let's Plays or uh, playthroughs, I am doing my own version of them. My first ever playthrough kind of commentary videos on Pokemon games. Uh, I'm starting with Pokemon Shield, obviously. So, Legionman, if uh, you would like to go check that out, give me some, you know, feedback and whatnot, I would greatly appreciate it. If you guys could go like and view that video and let me know what you think. I love your faces. Can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Subscribe if you have not yet. We'll be talking more about predictions and discussions and just in general Pokemon in this whole series as well as from the games, the anime. I'm going to try to start tackling both, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks for watching. I love your faces. Can't wait to see you in the next one. And peace off. Thank you very much.